in order to get the siding on the building, a ton of little things that need to be accomplished before that happens. And this week was all about those little details. Let's get into it. Good morning. We're gonna hang some siding and trim and flashing details on this wall. And, okay, all right. It's a bad joke. Sorry, it's Monday. What do you want from me? <laughs> uh, in fact, it's not even morning. I have successfully wasted the entire morning. Just, I, I don't have it. Whatever it is, I don't have it today. I'm tired. It was a rough weekend. Long story. Maybe I'll get into it. Maybe I won't. It has to do with plumbing pipes bursting and lots of water in the basement. and It was rough. Let's just put it that way. And now I'm tired and it's Monday. I would love to be outside doing some siding, but like I mentioned last week, the whole luma pole system, I think I have that solved, but I'm too tired to attempt something that's a little risky. So I'm just gonna wait till tomorrow and hopefully I get some sleep tonight. You need to get this mixing valve in because we have a shower going in this space. So you can see where I stubbed in the pipe, you know, a couple weeks ago when I did all that plumbing. And, and it looks like I actually knew what I was doing. Look at that. Right smack dab in the middle there. <laughs> oh, you gotta take the little wins when you can. We need to have this here now so that a, well, I needed to put that plumbing in a couple weeks ago. So I need to know the dimensions for that. And then, oh, I am tired. All right, so we have our, our rough in lines here. I wanna put the shower valve up there probably. Um, maybe below that block. It all depends on spacing for that vent line there. It's kind of in the way. I may even, no, well, I was thinking I could put the mixing valve over there, but the problem with that is when you reach in, because the door is here, when you reach in there, you're gonna wanna be able to reach the actual mixing valve handle. So yeah, that's gonna be tight. That is gonna be tight. Oh well, I can talk about it or I can just try to do it and see what happens. That's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna show you the details on this install. I decided to do a full box in frame. That way from this space, which is the walk-in closet, I can put a nice little panel on this to give us accessibility to this in the future. Heaven forbid we have to, you know, make some repairs. Now, I made these access slots in here for the tubing as wide as possible. As you saw me set the plates here and I marked it and then cut it out. This way I could have maximum amount of space in here to give me wiggle room, you know, for working in the future. I'm always thinking of the next person that has to deal with this. Again, I did the three quarter inch Advantech for the blocking face of it. Give us nice rigidity around the valve. That way when we bring our, whatever board we're bringing in here, I haven't decided on that yet. Most likely it'd be Schluter board, but we'll see. Um, right, so this is nice and firm here. And we have our valve and directly in line with the valve is gonna be the shower head mount. Now I like to mount my shower head mounts so that the flange is pretty close to the edge of the block. This way, it gives me full accessibility to the bottom side here. Again, in case this ever had to be serviced again, it makes it easier for everyone in the future. One more thing, I can check off the old list. Good morning, it's Tuesday. And last night I went home and I had to re-plumb my bathtub. So I had another late night. So I may be a little draggy today, yet again. But that's fine. <sighs> Last night here, uh, what did we do? Oh, so this line here goes to the Jack and Jill bathtub. And I'm just now realizing I re-plumbed two tubs yesterday. <laughs> anyway, uh, I didn't absolutely have to replace this line, but what happened was when I installed the 
the Ruffin valve, I don't know, however many weeks ago that was, when I went through the plywood with the hole saw, it just, just tickled that, this pipe, or pipe right here. And it didn't puncture it all the way. It held pressure. It was there during the whole uh, pressure test for the house. And I could have left it, but it, it bothered me that I did actually hit it. And I didn't, I, yeah, I didn't want to leave it. So I didn't, I took it out. And so last night I went ahead and put a whole new one in. And so that's finished. And I started in on the waste side of the bathtub. So before I left last night, I went ahead and glued all this up. And so this was where the where it comes out of the bathtub and into the plumbing. And then this is where it's going to go into the main line. And then we have uh, an unscrew screw joint here. So in case this thing does plug up, someone could come in in the future, loosen this up, loosen this up, and this whole thing will drop out and they can clean that out if they had to. Um, but for today, what we're going to do is we're going to sneak this guy up in there and then get this joint glued. And then we'll go outside and get out of this dark basement. But whew, it's raining this morning and I don't want to be on the roof when it's raining. morning well today we need to do all the little details before siding so again identifying the flashing understanding the full plan of what's going on down in this space uh, you have to work around the aluminum pole now so having had put this in when we did it doesn't make a ton of sense but it was the I don't know the monkey on my back that I was most concerned about when it comes to doing the siding here is erecting this thing and it went fine it went up thanks to Tom give me a little hand there with the, uh, the picks and being my eyes when I was working around the wires that was really helpful so I've started putting the trim or not trim the flashing up on the front corner there and that's already set it's not do everything down here also gotta take this brick mold off, pull the siding off, and seeing what repairs, if this door is even usable or not. Um, I think it is, we'll see. Uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's get to work. So flashing detail for here, it's gonna be really important to really make this bomber. 
because before I purchased this house, this had been repaired at one other point with all pressure treated lumber. And when we tore into it, we found that, I mean, all this was rotted out. So all this has been replaced by me. So I wanna make sure I protect this as much as possible. And having watched the cycles of weather, how this rots out, it's all about the snow load. So what I wanna do is I wanna create a flashing that comes down over the top of this. But before I get there, I wanna put another layer of flashing on top of this. So I'm gonna tuck it in here and bring it over the face of this, then bring another one over the top of this and over that. Now that I say that, I feel it's super redundant. And a step I just don't need to make. Then I need to put a kicker under that. I need to look at that door and see how out of plumb that is. I beat a bum bum bite him. <laughs> uh, I just listened to what this fox say. Anyway, um, right. So I got off the bottom flashing so that I could get onto this window because, well, I'm just about out of flashing material. It always takes more than you need. Anyway, and so I want to utilize, you know, the drive to the lumber yard to take my lunch. And it was too early, so I jumped on the window. So what I did is I set the, the felt paper to the wall, leaving enough loose material down at the bottom so that I could snake in some other material underneath it. Because you always got to pay attention to that drip. You want everything on top, right? And then tape off my sill. And now I'm ready to put a window in. Let's do that. One last check of the sill. Spot on. Ever so slightly high over here. It's just tickling the line. Yeah. So when setting your window, you want to make sure you got some wiggle room. Top and bottom, side and side to side. Grab yourself your little level. Yeah, it says this corner has to go up a little bit. Oh, just like that. And that's spot on. The other thing you want to do is check your diagonal. So that's 42 and a half. Just shy of 42 and a half. So that's plenty good for this. Uh, you're checking that to make sure that the frame of the window itself is square. I have installed windows from these folks here and they were way out of square. And you had to fight to get them in and then you gotta make sure the, the tracks and everything work correctly afterwards. It's a fight. But this window was purchased pre-COVID and I didn't have problems before COVID. I definitely have after. I hope they figured that out and have addressed the problem. All right. So I know I had to go a little bit high in that corner so I'm going to go ahead and just set a nail in this corner with it lifted up and then I'll adjust again. All right. And the first nails I put in aren't gonna be in the holes I provide for you because those give you a little bit of slop and I want this to be nice and tight. So now I'll nail it off in the holes that they give me. But I should verify I've got gaps everywhere. So I'm a builder, right? 
and this is what I do for a living. I build custom homes, I rehab old homes, I remodel, blah, blah, blah. And my typical mode of operation is when I need something, I buy it in bulk because I'm going to use it. And so today I had to go to buy more flashing, right? And I went there and I picked up the box that I normally pick up, which is a 50 foot coil, two foot tall, 50 foot coil. And I looked at the price tag and I said, nope, <laughs> $160 for a 50 foot roll of coil. And I only need about six feet. So, I mean, norm, I, even, even on a normal job, I would still buy that 50 foot coil. And cause having coil stock is super handy. I'm always making little flashing details for this, that, or the other thing. And it's just, but the painful thing is that Frankie here is just, you know, out of budget. Just, yeah, every chance I get, I need to put the screws to that budget. So I ended up buying two rolls of 14 inch. So I'll have to do like a double layer down here. And yeah, this was 30 bucks. So $60 a piece or $60 total. And I can get this thing finished up. Sure beats 160. Okay, enough complaining, let's get back to work. Well, good afternoon. It's Thursday, and this morning I spent at a customer's house doing the design and layout phase, which is kind of the exciting phase, um, and sometimes just a little frustrating. But it's fine. Uh, made some really good progress there, and yeah, I guess you'll learn a lot more about that some other time. But for Frankie, um, what do we have going on? So with half the day gone, I don't want to set up to do siding or anything. So we're just going to try to figure out things that we can do in a shorter period of time. Cause setting up takes a lot of time and yeah. So what I'm thinking is let's trim out this door and this window over here and start working on this outside corner. Now to get that going and then maybe, uh, I don't know, lift the aluminum pole and start ripping the siding off and see what kind of treasures we have hidden <laughs> under there. All right, that's today's plan. Let's do it. You know, showing up here half a day in, I was expecting to have a lot more energy. But let me tell you, I'm not on the struggle bus, I'm driving the struggle bus. <laughs> Holy cow, I just, I mean, immediately just fell flat on my face. And at every turn, of course, this thing's fighting me. Because the window or the door here behind me, I didn't hang that one. And honestly, I'm regretting it. I should have pulled it and rehung it or replaced it at that time, whichever. Because, you know, 
she's not square. And I looked at it before, and I, I just looked at the gaps real quick. My God, the gaps all look good. It's gotta be pretty decent. It's gotta be close. Oh, no, it's not. <laughs> uh, I mean, functionally, it'll be fine. It does kind of auto-close a bit. But, uh, yeah, to hang the trim on it, every piece is custom ripped. All right. I'm going to go home. Oh, a little bit early. Spend a little time with my kid, I think. Yep. That's what I'm going to do. See you in the morning. Good morning. It's Friday. And it is cold out there today. About 19 degrees. So that means the walk planes are super icy. And I don't need to have a trip fall hazard. So, what we do need to do is get this boiler plumbed for the intake and exhaust out to the exterior. So that we can put a nice standoff block on there, bring a siding to that, and you know, we'll flash all that and all that deal to hell. But uh, the boiler guy is still not here. So I'm gonna go ahead and rough in these two pipes for him. And that way it's done. And then I can have my standoff on and then the spray foamer whenever he can show up can spray to that and that's all nicely sealed and tight and happy and all that jazz. And right, so on a boiler, you're gonna have your two pipes. One's gonna be the intake, which is gonna be this guy over here, and then the exhaust. Now the exhaust really should be ran through this gray pipe instead of the white PVC. The gray will withstand the harshness of the highly acidic water that is produced by propane combustion. And in all honesty, I rarely see this done correctly. So uh, I just want to make sure that I do it correctly. Let's just put that out there. Yeah, then we'll get that air intake ran in there. Oh, I'm not a fan of these propane tanks being right here. Here's where I'm at. It's Friday afternoon and I've contacted the propane people and they will come and move those tanks for me. Um, but they can't happen today. And I could erect the staging around them, but then I had to tear the staging down just to let them move it and then put the staging back together. Seems like a real loss of productivity there. So, what I'm gonna try to do is tear off as much of this siding as I can and see where that puts me to the end of the day. I could do a corner beat on that side. That can give me some time to do some stuff. And, but there might be some surprises behind the siding that will require some attention too. So I think that would be the best course of action for the total project. Not great for today, but I think that's what makes sense. Yep. Yep.
down here, there is basically three different styles of foundation. We have the traditional stack stone with mortar. Then there is a poured concrete section here. And then over there is a pier and beam. So that's why you see these different jogs happening in the flashing detail. And it doesn't look the greatest, I admit that. But the reality is nobody's gonna see it. Because a little staircase is gonna be coming in here and a little walkway. And so this will all get covered up in that. The biggest important thing to do is make sure that the detail is completed and that it is gonna shed the water away from the building. And that is definitely what's gonna happen here. I've got nice deep overlaps happening. We've got this piece of flashing slanted downhill. So any water were to get there, it's gonna shed away. This has got a nice angle coming out of it. It's buried in soil. And I created a swale through here. So any water that comes in here or comes down over from the stone wall will end up in the middle and shed out. The window trim detail, just like all the other windows is completed. I have the bottom brace terminating into the legs. So that way if water does come in, it just travels along. It doesn't land on top of a bottom piece and then sit. So water just sheds right off. And then the head piece is full length and it's got the flashing detail. The door trim is all in. It's flashed on top with its tape. This corner bead is in with its flashing as well. I still need to tape the top of that. And that is there because of the upper section. This little section of the house actually cantilevers out just ever so slightly. And then the next corner board will go over that but won't cover up the total distance. So I had to put a little flashing cap on that as well. Uh, I started ripping out the siding and you know, I got a good portion of it down. Still have to get that side done, but we're waiting for the tanks to get removed. And so I was able to keep myself busy, you know, taking care of that. Got the zip panels taped off. I have most of the soffit painted, and so that's ready. And then the last thing I do believe that we got done this week is right down here. So this little wall received its flashing. I have this standoff block here for the uh, exhaust and air intake for the boiler. That's all set. Its flashing cap is installed. And so I can bring the siding right into the side of this and then up over the top of it. And that's all set. I believe that'll do it for this week. Thank you so much for stopping by High Peaks Home.